This is a University of Otago podcast. Hello and welcome to Otago University Vote Chat 2011. Vote Chat is a series of conversations with visiting campaigning politicians where we get them into the studio here um, and film them streaming it live on the internet and later available for uh, downloading on um, U- YouTube and iTunes. Um, we're trying to do things a bit different here. We're filming it in front of a live audience. Hopefully they will participate with some questions. Also, people following it out on Twitter, um, you can use the hashtag OUVoteChat2011 to uh, give us your questions for today's participant or your reactions. And today's participant is the new Helen Clark. Um, <laughs> what, I, what I mean by that is he is now the MP for um, Mount Albert, um, Helen Clark's old electorate. And um, we haven't heard so much from him um, down in Dunedin here for the last few years, but the reason I've got him along is that I think he's one of the real interesting Labour MPs at the moment. He's um, doing some interesting stuff, He's um, and I think he's got a real future, and so I think he's a real future in the Labour Party and someone to watch out for. So, um, welcome. Oh, thanks for having me. It's very nice coming. Thank okay, you. Okay, so what a lot of people are interested about is um, why politicians have got involved in politics. Yeah. You know, have you been? So, yeah, have you been a, a political junkie all your life? Or no, know? not at all. Uh, my family was actually a sort of a National Party voting family. Although my mother, I think, is changing now but um, <laughs> but we had a lot of discussions around the dinner table and it got really pretty excited and and uh, and and then I, I guess my sort of when I look back on that sort of political awakening kind of thing was uh, sitting around when David Longy in 1984 mm-hmm. it's a long time ago now but uh, won that election and it was mm-hmm. just like this enormous sort of sigh of relief and uh, and and you realize that you could actually do an enormous amount in politics. I mean, somebody said it's the, the roughest game at the biggest table. Yeah. You know, it's sort of that, uh, you know. So, so that was really how it sort of sparked. So you became interest. a supporter at that stage? Or? I did for a little while, and then I was, I was overseas. I worked overseas mm. for a long time and, um, and just let things drift. And I came, and, um, and I guess in a way, my, my work overseas, uh, I kept on coming back to New Zealand during the 90s and was really dis- discouraged with what I saw, mm. how things were going. It became a... Particularly in that late, late, later part of the 90s, it was a very cynical t- type of politics. Yeah. And so I went along and um, I thought, look, I, you know, if you're going to actually do it, you've got to put your hand up mm-hmm. and really get into it. And uh, so I went along to saw uh, uh, Phil Goff and um, Judith Tizard, who mm-hmm. were living in my area, the mm-hmm. MPs in my area, and said, look, if I can help, you know, mm-hmm. what would you... And, um, and actually, uh, both of them encouraged me to put my name on the, on the party list for that year, mm-hmm. 1999. And... Uh, I was the last person on the Labour list, the wow. very last. Yeah, okay. so <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I was, and uh, and then then worked for Phil Goff for a, uh, for a couple of years and in, in, in around about that time, and, and then ran in two thousand and two. Mm. Uh, that didn't work out. I was, I was standing up in Whangarei, mm. um, and then went off back overseas again and worked for the UN for a long time. Okay, so back in the eighties, when you became sort of politicised and um, supportive of Labour, uh, what, what about what was it that inspired you? Was it um, the economic reforms, the social reforms, or? or oh, look, I think the thing for me for, with Labour is, I mean, I, I guess I'm, I guess maybe slightly different. I mean, I, you know, I, my background is one of, you know, I, I mean, my sort of awakening, my real awakening, I suppose, took place many years before that. I was a you know, coming out of university and I was travelling with some friends and we were travelling down through Africa, down through the Sudan and we'd yeah. hitched, the, hitched the ride on this truck um, in, the, in the south of Sudan and it was going for three or four days. And while we were on this back of this truck, we were, a friend and I were peeling mangoes and, and chucking the mango skins off the back mm-hmm. of the truck. And I suddenly realised there were kids down below fighting over these mango skins oh, yeah. and I thought, my God, this is this is something more here than just being a, a tourist breezing through. And I guess that was sort of the that awareness of we have to be looking after, and you know, whether it's both in our country and outside mm. our country, we have to be looking after those people that are not mm. able to look after themselves. And it's not a matter of simply giving them mangoes. It's a whole lot more complicated than yeah. that. And I think that's the same thing in New Zealand. It's not simply asking a beneficiary to, well, here's a bit more money. It's a whole, yeah. bun- a whole, whole, whole lot di- more different than that. So it was that fairness thing, I guess, right. with, with Labour. But also the other thing about Labour is it's, um, it kind of is not af- afraid to take the big ideas on, you know, like do the... And, and that was the thing with yeah. Longy. Yeah, it got a, I think it went off the rails a bit. But 
it really transformed New Zealand. I mean, mm. you know, it really did make a big difference. Um, it wasn't tinkering around the edges. Uh, sure. You know, so I think those are the two things that had sort of attracted okay. me to the, to the So I guess the social justice, as you might call it, or yeah, exactly. yeah. issues was a driving force. But, I mean, there's, obviously there's a lot of people that thought that government, that 80s government, was not really doing much in terms of inequality. In fact, it was um, making things well, much worse Well, that's right. For but, the but, but, so back, in, but a, back in 1984, after nine years yeah. of Muldoon, it was like this, yeah, as, as I say, I remember sitting around that, the kitchen table and going, just cheering and yelling and, yeah. you know, drinking a lot. Yeah, you know, the odd glass of wine, you know. Yeah, of course. <laughs> so so were a, you in New Zealand during that time? That yeah, period? I was. And, so, and, I, and I started my sort of overseas career in uh, the end of the 80s. Um, right. Yeah. And so for the Rogenomic stuff, was that difficult for you personally? Or did you think it was absolutely needed and you were I think there was, there was some parts that was needed. I think what ended up happening was it got a little bit like sort of the... <laughs> Don't take this analogy too far, but I mean, you know, the, the, the breakup of the Soviet Union suddenly yeah. a whole lot of people got very rich from mm. from state assets um, because they happened to be, and there was an enormous amount of um, too many people close to the political elite. The, the political elite, the the advisors, and the business were all very much in in the one space, mm. and I think they just got carried away with their own ideology, and I think they did some very damaging things to New Zealand. But the beginning of that need definitely some of that needed to be done. Yeah. Right. So if you'd been in Parliament at that stage, you might have been around sort of the left of the of the caucus, um, kind of. I, I, I guess so. I mean, I, look, I, I think I would. Ha I would I put it this way. I mean, I, I, I think the reforms are fine, but every you've just got to make sure that every now and then you check to see mm. who's benefiting and who's losing. And if you don't do that, then actually you're not doing your job as a politician, unless of course you're out there to. to to help benefit one group, but as, mm. a, as a Labour politician, as my own and my own conscience, um, that was you know that would be very important to me to check to make sure that we, you know, we're okay. on the right. And you know, I've, I've got now, for example, in my electorate. Um, I mean, the, um, a couple of weeks ago, I had a woman come into my, in my into the electorate who who said she was hungry, which which is which is just um, just extraordinary. Mm. I mean, you know, just extraordinary. And I and the reason for that was that. Um, she's, she's on a benefit. Um, she's actually a teacher, and she was a whole bunch of different things happened, happened to her, and she needed to be on a benefit. Um, and she and, and she had to have emergency dental treatment, and suddenly she realised she'd blown her oh. entire allowance. And she went along to to Wins and said, "Look, can I get an emergency allowance?" And they said, "Well, you have to go to budgeting support first. She said, "Well, you know, I'm getting 190 bucks, and I'm 130 on rent, 60 bucks left." How much budgeting do you support? Do you right. need to, to work? You know, and there's a full week waiting list on, on, on to get budgeting support in Auckland. Oh God! Um, so she came and she literally was hungry. So we ended up um, having a whip around the office and, and giving her a food parcel and sent. And also, but it just seems to me that we've, mm. when you look at policies now, you mm. have to look at okay, that's an extreme case, but there's actually not there's a, there's a number of those people. Mm. And if, we, if our policies are doing that to parts of our society, then we have to start looking at our policies and saying, you know, are, are we doing the, is, is this right? Are, are, we, are we going in the right direction? Okay. So do you think beneficiaries are paid enough? Do you think the benefits oh, are okay. livable, sort of, you know? I mean, no, look, you know, I don't think people go on the benefit. I mean, look, there's a group of people that are, that are hardcore on the benefit, perhaps being, getting um, benefit, uh, Payments, um, and and I can tell you that it irritates uh, the people who live beside them as more than it does. You know, it's more wealthy people. Mm -hmm. um, they, you know, there's a number of people who I'll meet in the streets, and they'll say, you know, "You'll talk. We'll talk about the inequality of the tax system." They go, "Yeah, mate, but I tell you what, that that guy down the road, he's a sickness benefit, and I saw him up there cleaning his roof the other day, and you know, you've got to go nab nail him." You know, um, I think there's you know obviously some people in that category. But nobody chooses to be on a, on a, on a benefit, yeah. um, and, 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 and everybody would like to be off, off it. But some people, I, I just think that, in, in, and I just don't think people quite understand that there are a group of New Zealanders who, if you, even if you offer them every opportunity, they would not see it. If, if, if you know, it, it is, they have so kind of sense ground down that they mm. don't actually see opportunities, even if they're put in front of them. So I think there's a there's a it's a lot more complicated. It's a little bit like the 
the woman in Africa. It's a whole bit much more complicated than giving her a bag of rice. I mean, that's not going to solve her situation. Sure. It just simply means that next, next month you've got to give her another bag of rice. But you know, it's the same thing in our own society. I, I have a question about this stuff. Like, why do you think that the... Because it seems like the National Party's approach to this is to argue that um, like aspiration is what people should strive for and things. And just like, what do you think about that argument and why, and why that argument resonates so much with people when there's obviously so many people in trouble? Um, I, look, I think everybody would like to think that they can, you know, that we, we can pull ourselves up by our own bootstraps. And I, and, and I think for a, for a large number of people that's, that's possible. And I think our education system is, is part and parcel of that. Um, you know, for, I mean, being a being tertiary education spokesperson, what you realise is that kids coming out of school, perhaps disillusioned, don't go into work, don't go into training, but particularly don't go into training or something, and fall off and sit at home. It's unbelievably expensive and difficult to get them up and back into training again. And we, we, we have this gap, that transition doesn't, just doesn't work at the moment. So I, but I do, um, so I, getting, fixing that would help a lot of people in a sense fall, um, from falling off. But I do actually think that there are uh, uh, some people who just find it difficult to see opportunity. And, and it's just not quite as simple as saying, look, you know, you could do this or you could do that or you could do something or other else. It's it just, yeah. and it's very hard for, for ordinary people, educated people, people that are here in the audience yeah. to actually put themselves in that position because, you know, we've been blessed, I guess, with, with the ability to, to get ahead and it okay. just doesn't happen for some people. So uh, I guess you might see it as like uh, the bag of rice scenario, but um, the Mana Party oh, were... a little bit... Uh, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. but the Mana Party were suggesting, I think, yesterday that uh, all beneficiaries, I think, should be given a $1,000 Christmas sort of uh, uh, payout because mm. they're in such a bad state at the moment. Um, what do you think? Would that be desirable? Well, I don't, I'm, first of all, I'm not sure if we could possibly afford that, uh, to be honest with you. Um, I mean, work it out, what would that be? A, a what, lot. $400 million <laughs> yeah, or something, lot. you know. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I don't think, and, I don't, and again, I don't think it's, it's, it's the answer. Sure. I, I think it's a lot, a lot more complicated than giving people a one-off handout. Yeah. Yeah. 